you for joining me and that we might have a time, a moment, just to be together on this day after Sunday. That we might reflect and process some of what we heard yesterday or even for myself, what I preached. So let me begin by sharing the scripture again. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. Now I'm reading from the Common English Bible, but if you're in the New Revised Standard Version or King James, uh, please, you, we, we will talk about that and can develop that. Paul's writings begin. He gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. His purpose was to equip God's people for the work of serving and building up the body of Christ until we all reach the unity of faith and acknowledge of God's Son. God's goal for us is to become mature adults, to be fully grown, measured by the standard of the fullness of Christ. As a result, we aren't supposed to be infants any longer who can be tossed and blown around by every wind that comes from teaching with deceitful scheming and tricks people play to deliberately mislead others. Instead, by speaking the truth with love, let's grow in every way with Christ, who is the head. The whole body grows from him, as it is with joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The body makes itself grow in that it builds itself up with love, and each one does its part. Wow, powerful. This is us. As plantation, I think of all the history, 61 years, and the pictures I showed in the sermon of my own family, I think of the different changes in my own life, that the transformation as well as the struggles, as well as the, the blessings and the pure joy, having a sister that we traveled and moved from parsonage to parsonage as preacher's kids and then being in each other's weddings and being there, but also that when I said yes to Danny, that I took on a whole new family. How can we, though, as a church, see ourselves as a family of God that lasts forever and that is eternal, that it's not just an individual but collective, that goes beyond just our, our birth families, and we know that, that how we see ourselves as family, as a single parent, as those do not have parents, but maybe have been adopted or sponsored or in this world in different ways, and that we have relationships. The church of Jesus Christ, the body of Christ, that is who we are, and that God called us through Christ to be a family. We are now brothers and sisters with Christ. Wow. That, that kind of when I first heard that expression, that we are now the brothers and sisters of Christ. What a responsibility. I have a few questions that came to mind when I thought about this. With this, this reflection and looking at who we are, what are the ways or examples in which our faith can help not just us as individuals, but how we as a family of God, how, how, how can our faith help one another? Well, we think of it, first of all, praying for one another. But I also think we need to be in conversation, not just in prayer, but in dialogue. And that means that we need to be together. I know right through COVID that we, for me, it's been so hard to be on Facebook all the time. Well. I found out other ways that we might sit outside together and wear masks. But how are there other ways that we can be there for one another through our faith? Hmm. One of the things I realized growing up is that I need to stop talking and I need to listen. And listening means emptying myself out so I can hear what the others are saying and feeling. Not thinking about what I'm going to say next. So I'd like you, wherever you are, to write down two or three things that you can think of that you might be able to help others through your faith, how you can help each other. I know with my mother, in, in very traditional ways, that she would always take a uh, covered dish dinner to somebody that was maybe sick or needing food. Well, today it might be, you know, sharing internet or Wi-Fi or sharing, yes, going to the grocery store, having them delivered now. There's so many creative ways that we can think of. 
but we need to be in relationship with and we need to communicate and I get that. Another question to think about. It says that we are to do it in love, to speak the truth. I know that there are times that I want to say, I will speak the truth to you and I'll let you have it. <laughs> well, I have to stop myself and think about that. How do I speak the truth in love? Not to speak the truth in the way that Marta wants to do it. How do we as individuals, and yes, as a church collectively, how do we speak to the community and the world around us? A lot of times I will write my prayers, or yesterday I had a, a friend in a um, kind of what I call a rap or a blog that was shared about the violence, that how many shootings we've had where individuals have been killed or shot in the last 30 days, 48 different episodes. And those were the only ones that were reported that we heard. How do we speak the truth in love? and to do it where it will make a difference, not that will block and that will stop us or paralyze us or hurt us. That one takes thought and prayer and time because so many different ways we've thought through the ages that we might make a difference. But how do we do it as Christ brothers and sisters? To each other, yes, and to the world. Let's think about that. How do we make sure, as I like this last verse, the 16th, said the whole body grows from him as it is joined and held together by all the supporting ligaments. The third question is, what is it that you have to offer in this season, in this time in your life? Yes, the ligaments, each of us. Some are apostles, some are prophets, some are evangelists, some are pastors, some are teachers. What is God calling you to do? You may not feel that you're called, but I have to ask myself as pastor then, how am I to be in ministry at this place, in this season, at this time? That our context, our culture, that we all are, are called to be part of the family of God in so many different ways. I hope that we will think about that and journal about that together, that you might email me or you may text me, and that we may continue the conversation. Thank you for this, these moments with me. Let us end in a prayer together. Oh God, help us to see how we may speak the truth in love and that we may be the body of Christ of you, that will be the family that will last forever on earth as it is in heaven. Oh God, help us discover, push us, open our eyes and our hearts so that we may see how you have called us to be the body, the church, the family of God.